Greetings Budget Gaming fans, it's time for another Silverbird Selection Game Review and today I'm looking at Street Warriors. This was a Silverbird release from 1989, pretty uncommon game to find on eBay. You will find copies now and then but it's not on there all the time. And the price I paid for this game was £2.75. Annoyingly I have seen copies since then go for less, like maybe £1.50 or £2. So some you win, some you lose. Let's take a look at the game and see what it's like. Let's begin then by looking at the packaging for the game and as you can see it's the Silverbird purple and black stripes variation. Quite a nice image on the front of this though, I do like this one, I like how it's sort of bursting out of the oval. You can see his feet at the bottom there. The Street Warriors logo is quite nice as well, it's done with planks of wood nailed together and then you've got the Street Warrior himself in the middle of the image there with a big plank of wood fighting off some nasties in the streets obviously in the background there. That's pretty cool, I like that. And there's that logo again on the side, not quite the same as the one on the front, but similar sort of idea with the planks of wood nailed together. Back cover has got the four screenshots as always, which you can see are some kind of scrolling fighter. There's a couple of scenes there in a graveyard, and then a couple that just like they're in a park or something like that. And the blurb about the game just says, unarmed and undercover in the underworld. Although you would suggest that based on the front image there, he's not unarmed because he's armed with a big plank of wood. So looking inside the inlay, we can see something a little bit different from the other Silverbird packaging that we've seen so far. As I mentioned, this game came out in 1989. It looks like they revised the packaging a little bit. And instead of just a list of upcoming games, they've actually got some screenshots of them. So as you can see, it says look out for these other exciting Silverbird titles. And we've got Combat Crazy, Star Strike 2, Antiriad and Rebel Star 2. Now the two games on the left came out on the Commodore 64, the two on the right didn't. I think the bottom right Rebel Star was just a Spectrum game. I'm not sure about Star Strike 2, those graphics look quite nice. That might even be like a 16-bit game. Anyway, let's move on to the instructions. So you can see Street Warriors copyright Daisy Soft. There's something bad going down on the streets of Chicago, the boss of everything nasty is stepping up his operations and you've got to stop him. His highly trained thugs have been ordered to stop you as you progress through the streets, the graveyard and the wharf to reach his warehouse hideout. Collect the money left by the thugs as you take them out with kicks and punches and get yourself a bomb with which to end the boss's stranglehold in the city. This sounds almost like a terrorist act that you're perpetrating but I suppose it is against a bad guy so there you go. So then you've got the loading instructions and then the gameplay instructions, so as it's already said, you kill the baddies to collect the cartons for credits. When all the baddies have been knocked out, find the sack of loot and pick it up to exit to the stores. And you've got to buy a bomb to kill the boss at the end. And then it's got the sort of control. So with fire button pressed, no, that's got to be the wrong way around. It says with fire pressed, then the joystick makes you walk around. And without it pressed, it makes you punch and kick. That just can't be right. Uh, and it says there uh, to pick up a bat when it's been dropped by a thug, pull down and press fire. Also got some keyboard controls. So that's pretty much it for the instructions. I think they're quite nice. They're a lot nicer than some of the earlier Silverbird packaging. And I do like this edition of the screenshots from other games. That's quite nicely done. So the packaging might have been improved a little bit, but the loading screen is another typical pathetic Silverbird range loading screen in a lovely fetching shade of Commodore Brown. Now loading Street Warrior. Not Street Warriors either. According to this, it's actually Street Warrior. We'll see when the game loads which one it really is. But yeah, that's awful. So the game's loaded. As you can see, we've got a high score table. We've got a title screen with a guy who looks a little bit like Rambo on it, sort of in a silhouette almost. And also a credit screen, you can see it's Daisy Soft programmed by Delvin Sorrell. Quite a nice SID tune playing in the background as well. And that was by Ant Lees. And the graphics were by Steve Hall. A reasonably good title screen and presentation there then so let's get on with the game itself so we start level one you can see we've got a status bar at the bottom and I'm the guy in the white 
just dispatch these two guys. I'll explain what I'm supposed to do in a moment. This guy's just kind of standing and waiting at the moment, so that's handy. And you'll see a few glitches like this throughout the game. So yeah, I'm the guy in the white suit, and you'd have to say what a choice of colours to wear to go and beat people up, because you're probably going to get blood on those white clothes. It almost looks like he was heading to the disco uh, for Saturday Night Fever, especially when you see the way he kind of minces along when he walks. He's definitely uh, a disco-looking guy. Um, and what you also probably can't tell on the video, but there's actually a gap between his legs and his body. Sometimes you can actually see the scenery behind it. Uh, so that's not great. So anyway, what you've got to do, it's it's kind of a scrolling beat-em-up, but it's within a set area which you can scroll backwards and forwards in. So once I go to the right, I can actually come back to the, the place where I'm starting. It's not a only going to the right kind of game like Double Dragon or Final Fight or something like that. So the idea of the game is you've got to beat the, all these people up and collect the little boxes that they drop and then you use those boxes to buy things in between levels if you get to the end of a level. Uh, and eventually you've got to earn enough money or credits to buy a bomb to destroy the big boss at the end of, I think it's the fifth level or something like that. So let's fight these guys. As you can see, sometimes the enemies just stop dead. Um, but let's walk up and try and fight these guys. So you've got two moves, which are punch and kick. And the kick is pretty useless, so I don't really tend to use that. I just use the punch. And every enemy takes three punches to kill. So there's not much variety in enemies. As you can see, they're all just bald guys quite clearly with the same legs and bodies as my player sprite. And uh, they don't tend to fight back much either to begin with. So basically you've got to wipe out as many of these guys as possible. Um, and eventually the level ends and you collect the uh, money bag that it mentioned in the instructions. And then you go to the store and you, you buy stuff with these credits that you're picking up. So that's quite different to a normal beat-em up, beat up where you just go from left to right and just beat up everything that comes your way. So I'm just going to wander because these guys don't really engage with you that much. They'll just kind of walk alongside you or follow you. They don't go any faster than you. So I'm just going to scroll along and show the rest of the level. As you can see, it's a graveyard. There's a fence at the background. It's fairly nicely drawn. Oh, that guy finally hit me. Now, when they do engage with these guys, it's really hard to hit them back. So the best approach is to actually just move out of the way and re-engage them. I'll show you the kick just for reference. You can see he's kind of punching at me. I'm not getting any hits back. So, yeah, definitely the best approach is just to run away and then go back to them and hit them. Yeah, so they've, they've become a little bit more tricky to, to take on. Well, that's it, basically. That's the first level summed up, and all the later levels as well, to be fair, or at least as far as I've got. And you can see the uh, the movement of the characters is not great. Um, the kick and punch move. The punch is all right. The kick's pretty pathetic looking. So I've just lost a life there, and as you can see, there was no, like, me reappearing somewhere else on the level, giving me a chance to re-engage the guys they just carry on punching you and your health just drops down after you've lost a life um you can they can just run it all the way down i don't obviously don't want to demonstrate it too much because then i'll run out of lives and die but yeah it's it's quite hard to engage some of them um it's definitely you can't go toe to toe with them they either hit you or you hit them so is that the level completed or is there more guys somewhere on this level now there should be a money bag there we go so i go and walk into that money bag and that'll then take me to the store i've no idea why there's a money bag at the end of the level there's no end of level bosses as you've seen every single enemy is identical so okay now i'm in the shop and um there's various things you can buy so you can exchange your credits for money you can increase the time because there is a time limit on the game it seems which is about 15 minutes at the moment you can add 10 units to your health for 8 credits and you can purchase a bomb for 25 which I haven't got enough to do at the moment. So I'm going to add some units to my health because that seems to be a sensible thing to do. So I'll get 2 lots of units to the health and I'll also increase my time 
probably don't really need to to be honest but I'll do that so I'm back up to two lives and I'll move on to the next level it's quite a nice tune again in the background of this the music is quite decent the sound otherwise is pathetic it's just the, the sound of the guy punching so you can see you actually earn money rather than points also for each enemy that you kill now on this level some of the enemies have got sticks that doesn't make them any harder to dispatch it's still just the three hits but you can pick the sticks up as well if you can get in the right place you can see a stick's been dropped on the floor there let's try and pick that up while these guys are all standing nicely waiting for me to approach them oh you just got to stand in the right place i think there we go i finally picked the stick up so there you go now i'm armed with the stick now to be honest it doesn't make a lot of difference um, the stick doesn't do more damage it still takes three hits to kill each enemy and the, move, the, the actual hitting with the stick he never actually swings it he just kind of wobbles it side to side and you can see the boxes do disappear after a few seconds so you do need to pick the boxes up quite quickly otherwise you won't rack the credits up that you need and again all the enemies this time they're identical to me just in different coloured outfits there's a guy in a very nice red disco suit there, for example, where I'm going to go and smash in a minute. But yeah, the um, the enemy AI is pretty pathetic. They just they, sometimes they don't walk towards you at all. Other times they just walk straight into being hit. So it's pretty bad. Again, I'll, I'll scroll in a minute just to show the background on this level once I've got rid of a couple of more of these guys. And you can see this time it's a park. Again, it's not too badly drawn. The backgrounds are reasonably well drawn. A bit repetitive, but the sort of paving slabs look quite nice. The benches and the hedges. Oh, I've lost my stick. Kind of stuck a little bit here now. Um, but there's not really much more to say about the game. It's pretty dull. I say there's no uh, end of level bosses, there's no other items to pick up other than the stick and the little crates. Um, the enemy AI is not great. The sound effects are pretty uninspired. It, it's, a, it's not a good game. Um, I guess for budget price, it, it's you know I get the kind of thing you'd expect. I don't think there are many good scrolling fighters at any price on the uh, Commodore 64 to be honest probably Target Renegade uh, was one of the better ones obviously had monstrosities like Double Dragon which also had this funny quirk where sometimes the player's legs are disconnected from his body obviously two sprites link, sort of linked together and generally not very well Ooh, I'm about to lose another life dance my way over here I'm getting beaten up a bit badly at the moment. I can't seem to actually get any hits in myself. You can see that guy disappeared off one side of the screen and reappeared on the other. So yeah, it's just dispatched the endless stream of enemies. Oh, I'm about to die. I don't think I'm going to make it off this level, unfortunately. I don't know how many enemies you're supposed to get rid of. I think it's probably about 20 usually. And I've, I've amassed... Yeah, I'm in trouble here. One more hit and I'm dead. Oh. I was hoping to try and show the third level. No, I'm dead. And there's no sort of ceremony about dying. You don't fall on the ground or anything. You literally just stand still and the game's over so i've got the top score which can't be bothered to put my name in for to be honest um but if you don't put any letters in it actually spells out firebird so i'll just do that so there's the f the i the r the e the b the i the r and the d firebird got the top score and i'm not going to play it again i have got to the third level previously and it's more of the same it's just a slightly different background exactly the same enemies again so nothing really exciting to talk about there either so yeah, pretty poor game overall, although the graphics are not too bad. Let's get to the scores. 
So packaging I thought was pretty decent, definitely the best of the Silverbird range, the, the black and pink stripes range packaging that I've seen so far. So I'm going to give that 7 out of 10. Presentation was also pretty decent, the loading screen was terrible, the title screen and stuff is pretty good, the music is not too bad, I'm going to go with 6 for the presentation, I don't think it's amazing but it's reasonably good. Uh, graphics I'm also going to give 6, again the player sprites are pretty terrible and very repetitive, not much imagination gone into creating the enemies and things like that, but the backgrounds are pretty good, so 6 for the graphics. Sound, well the music's not too bad on the title screen, but the sound in game is awful, it's just a few little punching noises, so I'm going to go with 5 out of 10 for sound. And finally playability, I'm going with 3 out of 10, really boring gameplay, just do the same thing over and over again, try and complete the level, stock up on more health and go to the next level and so on. So I'm going to go with 3 out of 10 for playability, which gives an overall score of 5.3, which I'd say is about right. It's probably a little bit too high, but basically it's a poor scrolling beat-em-up, not very imaginative and lacking in any kind of fun really, to be honest. It's just boring. So that's my review of Street Warriors. Not a very impressive game. Next up, hopefully we'll review something more interesting. If you've got any thoughts about Street Warriors, if you've had any experience of playing the game or can name me any really good scrolling beat-em-ups that I didn't mention during the review, then let me know. I'll be back next time with another game review and thanks for watching.